say hello because we're not that many people. You're welcome to. <laughs> I hear someone in the call. I muted them just in case. Um, great. So, uh, if you don't know me, most of you do. Uh, my name is Pia Grunewald. I'm a program officer at All Digital and coordinating a project called Open AE. So it's Open Adult, adult Education, Promoting Open Source Technologies and Non-Formal Adult Education. And uh, right now it's All Digital Week. Uh, this is about the 11th year, maybe 10th year of All Digital Week, where um, we promote digital inclusion by arranging different programs to encourage people to get online, participate online. And uh, this is my second webinar. Uh, my first one was today on OpenStreetMap. Uh, and this would be a nice activity to do because uh, OpenStreetMaps, I find, is a really great uh, program to show how easy it is to join in uh, the open, free and open source movement. It's looking bad for me. I don't know if you see it, but I want to bring it back. Uh, so, also when they think of open source technologies, they think they have to be a high level programmer. And intimidated by what that means. Uh, proprietary software is ubiquitous at this moment, and open source technologies can seem like an alternative. However, it's very easy to participate and sometimes even more uh, convenient. Uh, the proprietary forms of software. I'm just going to get started uh, giving a little bit of a background on the Open Adult Education Project, which uh, we aim to promote open education and innovative practices in the digital era by developing relevant and high level skills and competencies and extending and developing educators' competencies in adult education. were identified as ways to address challenges from the all 2017 member survey, which uh, is a network of digital competency centers, particularly in the non-formal sector across Europe. And, and centers identified needs to develop innovative practices to promote digital skills, focus on new notions of digital skills, uh, such as competencies not only linked to the devices but uh, in general and also using standardized frameworks such as Digcomp edu. Uh, the Open AE project was developed and so far we have a curriculum with eight modules that aim to teach e-facilitators uh, uh, technologies to help them pass these skills on and skills and competencies to underemployed and underskilled adults. This career delivered to free facilitators in Belgium, Switzerland, Italy, and Spain. And the OPE is modular. And by that, what we mean that uh, you can take modules and adapt it to your local needs. So, we started with free and open source software. What do we mean when we say free and open or software. Um, this was a notion uh, largely promoted by the Free Software Foundation and Richard Stallman as there are four freedoms. The first freedom is that you have the freedom to run a program for a purpose. The second is that you can study how the program works and change it to make it do what you want. Uh, the third one distribute it and make copies so you can have your neighbor, and this also includes the right to list it and even commercialize it. Even if it's free, you can uh, redistribute it for whatever way you find reasonable. And freedom is to improve the program and release your improvements to look so the whole community benefits. This is a big aspect of what Open the Street Maps project wants to do is that it's a crowdsourced map, and the idea is you can improve it for ways uh, you find benefit for the entire community. 
Now, a lot of people will say open source software is not free. There's a little bit of a debate about the nomenclature on this. So some other software, some people open source software refer to free software. However, some others may open source software as not necessarily free and doesn't risk respect the freedoms to distribute it, run programs for any purpose. So in this program, we're referring to open source and free software in the same way. So we're in a division on this. Uh, Google, for example, would be one um, here. The software is open, but it's not necessarily free. So in how it works, you can add things to it, but a lot of this might uh, have to go through loopholes on Google Maps. So if you add an item to Google Maps, it would maybe take a week for it to be verified or other Google Maps could pay to display more than your item. So street maps uh, to challenge, uh, not challenge that it was created for it, but from an alternative to how Google Maps work. And we'll go into the details a little bit later. So with OpenStreetMaps. Uh, OpenStreetMaps was created by Steve Coast. Uh, he's a British man from the UK in 2004. And he was inspired by the success of Wikipedia and also concerned about the dominance of the proprietary map data in the UK and elsewhere. Since then, two million users of OpenStreetMaps, so people are registered in OpenStreetMaps, adding contributions, making edits. The reason why OpenStreetMaps is so successful too is that there's a lot of inexpensive uh, portable satellite navigation devices, uh, satellite data that can be imported onto OpenStreetMaps, and you can map the map from satellite perspective and make the edits directly. Um, when read maps in this program, you'll see how that's done. It's very, very hard to do. And if you sign up for OpenStreetMaps, you'll get a through on how to uh, do it yourself. So let's go to the next slide. So uh, if you want to sign up for OpenStreetMaps, you go to www openstreetmaps.org, hash user, hash new. To start an account, you have to provide an email address, a password, and also agree to terms to your contributions to be part of the public domain. Why would this be part of the public domain? Well, OpenStreetMaps license is a free share alike license. So you're less allowed to do whatever you want with OpenStreetMaps data under the condition that you agree any modifications or additions are license. In some ways, freedom, but it's necessary for the greater good. It spreads from an openness of data. It allows people to crowdsource and improve your edits. And the force people to contribute to improvements so that everyone can benefit uh, from OpenStreetMaps. So I'll give you a look. I'm assuming you can see my share screen and chat so I'll go on to here this is a window I have it because I'm already logged on to OpenStreetMaps but we'll log on this is what you'll see so you'll see enter your email address you confirm it you stop you can also use a third party to log in and so you can log in with Twitter or Google Facebook and um, you have to agree to the terms and conditions, which are very clearly written out, and uh, to agree to allow your data to be part of the public domain. Once open street maps, so you see my login name is here in the corner, and this is generally what open street maps look like. What I particularly like about this. So a lot of programs use open OpenStreetMaps, I don't know if you know Pokemon Go, different map services use OpenStreetMaps, navigation tools use OpenStreetMaps, because it benefits 
benefits a lot from the how data is crowdsourced and how much people contribute to it so that it's really up to date uh, much better than say Google Maps in some areas in some areas it's lagging behind and I'll show you different examples on how it can be very up to date or it can be a little bit behind click on open street maps you'll see this little hand here one of the first things you can do is you can drag and zoom out in. The big benefit I like about OpenStreetMaps, particularly if you do uh, hiking or cycling, is rails and walkways for different towns, uh, cities, or mountains, whatever, are much better marked on OpenStreetMaps. And you find yourself. You also find different programs like navigators, um, add-ons add your phone that use OpenStreetMaps. And, and when it happens, you download the map for the region you're in, and it is works on. So you don't need an internet connection, and it can use the GPS uh, signal from to help you find where you are. So it works kind of like Google Maps. But if you are off in the countryside or off in a park and you're trying to find a trail to go, people who trail work will mark the trails much better on OpenStreetMaps than, say, Google Maps. So I'll zoom out. Um, now, going into editing, I'll give you a little note, a little bit about notes. So our Parts of OpenStreetMaps. So if you want to make an error or you find data on OpenStreetMaps is not up to date, or you hear that there's a new trail that's going to be built, a new bike lane that's going to be built, or a new road that's going to be built, you can note on OpenStreetMaps and uh, keep an eye out for when that is, and it can be updated to OpenStreetMaps by another person who. As crowdsourcing the information is in the area and they'll add it directly. So, notes section looks like. So, you can click on layers and you'll see over here there's a lot of different X's and marks. And this is when you, if you go on to this section, you go on to layers, notes. Then you can see all the different uh, elements to, or want them to be checked out. For example, I can go to this part, part and underlet. And here see there's an unre unresolved note. Uh, Thierry left a note saying, there's a new foot, foot and go path, path next river than it. He put this about two weeks ago. He put a link to the panel saying that this is, this is upcoming. This will be in the news. This is where it's expected to be. When it's there, someone can map it out and click it as resolved. If you click on it, someone said, does this footpath really exist? It is not a very visible on aerial imagery. So some old Bruce Forever let's note and Camilla a day ago uh, resolved it, presumably saying this footpath exists or doesn't exist and the matter is resolved. Open street map, uh, cycle maps. So if you're a cyclist, you can find uh, bike routes and transportation maps. So a lot of people use Google Maps because they want to find uh, public transport. You can also edit this on OpenStreetMaps. Now I will on to note here. My accent, but I am North American. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. And this is an example of, of this map of my city where I'm from, and this is a note uh, regarding public transportation. So, uh, someone, um, Mike Lewisville, left a note seven months ago saying 
the bus route 23 doesn't exist anymore. This has been changed to route 47. And they left different notes saying the map, the open street maps is incorrect. Did someone it and will resolve it? Or maybe they don't know how to do the changes themselves. If I see the notes, you can click on layers of OpenStreetMaps and then go to Map Notes and them, unresolve them. If you want to add a note yourself, you can click on a point and write that out. Now, another example from Canada. Uh, and I traveled through there recently, and this is one of the areas that I found OpenStreetMaps very helpful and how you can add information that's not very typical because it's not very commercial, but it's public information and it's useful for people to know. So you can see how it's added. Uh, White River, this is a city in, uh, not a city, tiny little town. In uh, Ontario, along uh, Lake Sudbury, it's one of the places you can really stop by if you're going from, say, uh, Sudbury. If you're going from Sudbury to, say, uh, Thunder Bay or to Winnipeg, it's one of the only places you can stop by. And it's a bit well known because uh, it's a city where the Pooh was from, <laughs> so. Uh, this area of Canada is really no, well known for bears. There's a lot of, there's probably more than humans in this part of the country. And in this small little place, if you go along the highway, you'll see a statue of Winnie the Pooh. However, as I said, this is quite a desolate part of the country, and you may not always have a place to stay. Hotels might be filled. So they put a little note here that there's an official free cyclist camp camping. So if you're going through and you have nowhere to stay, this is a place where uh, the city allows you to set up a tent, uh, park your car, and have a rest for the night. And you'll see in some parts of North America, you might see unofficial camp areas. Even the visitor center that's right next by, if you are for a place to stay, they will recommend that you stay at that point. So information you can add on to OpenStreetMaps quite easily and can help uh, other people in your community, other travelers, uh, know how to get around and know what's the right place to go. An example of uh, OpenStreetMaps uh, from my city of Calgary. And I'll show you how to do a little bit of editing here. To my presentation, and all the notes that I need to say, I have to switch a little bit back between presentation and uh, the OpenStreetMaps editor. So, so thanks for uh, some patience. So uh, there's a few key terms. So an editor is a program or website that you can edit the map on how that works in a second. Then you have a node, which is a point in the map. A node uh, can be a restaurant, a tree, or I showed you before, an unofficial campground where you can rest on the way. A war area, so this can be a road, a stream, a lake, or a building, cycling, a trail. And like is a bit of data uh, of, of the node area. So it can be a restaurant name or road speed limit. Now let's go to the next slide. So we'll go to OpenStreetMaps and we'll learn how to add, add points. I'll show you one example for a uh, a city that houses and how you can um, time <laughs> um, things out on OpenStreetMaps. And also how you can add your organization if it's not already. I'll go straight here. So, this is called Glen Morgan. It's uh, 
wear my brush, to be quite frankly. And you can see that there's a lot of, of detail. You can see all the different houses, all the numbers are there. Uh, this is because my sponge decided it would be fun to map everything out on open maps. And it's actually quite fun to do if you are looking for a great way to pass the time. You can go to street maps and start editing. Morgan stops here, Glenbrook starts, and that's where the mapping ends. So how could you add these little houses that you see here to a street map? Well, you go to the part here, you click on edit. And this will take a moment to uh, appear, especially now because the induction is working a little bit slow. And you satellite data of the internet. And so you can click on, you can see that it has areas. You can click on it. If you want to change the shape, you can make it more of a square. Uh, you can split it, you can delete it. If you draw a circle, it can also make it more of a circle for you. And to show different areas in your city, you can map out. And mapping is just a basic. Thing. So we talked about points. So you can, it when you go, you can already see it says add restaurants, monument, post boxes, or other points to the map. Post boxes is extremely useful if someone's post box. It's great to know. I know some people have a hard time finding them. Lines, highways, or streets. You can see that the streets are mapped here. If you click on it, you can add more information to that. An area. Area is is what you want to use if you want to add parks, buildings, lakes, or other areas to the map. So I will show a quick example. I know this is very, very, very small um, for you to see, but if you're lost or you don't know how to do it, as I say, open street map, start an account, and then it'll start. It'll be quite clear. Here. Area, and now I have my little cursor, cursor here. You can move this house here and down to the corner of the house. You space bar or your or click and draw a square around this place. To click on house, that house is done. And you can repeat this or until you're done the entire neighborhood, like uh, we just saw for Glen Morgan, that every single house was marked. Now, oh, um, I'm going to example here from Brussels. Uh, things seem to be quite well marked out here. Uh, uh, however, add more information. And if you're listening to this call and you're from an organization, uh, you're from the competency centers, I think it's to share information on what your organizations are so people can find it on the map, can share information about it. I have here uh, Georges Moreau Strat 110 in uh, Brussels. This is one of the partners of the Open World Education Project, and that's uh, Max uh, Ray. I know that and I looked over here and I saw that they're not on map. So I can change the feature. So they have organization. It's an NGO office. So I will change here because I know Max has this entire building here to an end. And, and all this other information and connect. And by that, now people, when they're walking down the streets and they're, they don't know what's happening, the information 
is this and other people will be able to find the organization much better. Now I will, oops, I want to open Microsoft. So now another item on OpenStreetMap. So you can look at diary entries. Uh, see over here you have, have the edit history. You can see all the different history. You can export data. You can look at G traces. What you're seeing is to that automation later is a uh, diary. This, this is almost like the notes that I was mentioning to you earlier, but it's a little bit more narrative. So people in the world who are editing OpenStreetMaps already here, you see something in English, other uh, post in Dutch, and other post in Japanese, uh, where people are talking about what OpenStreetMaps and uh, different initiatives or challenges that they may have. It could be that they also don't know how to add notes, so they're adding it here. Right? You probably are at home, if not you see. Uh, you can see some dice. There's already something a little bit above regarding the uh, uh, law for the virus. There are very entries on taking advantage of recent school years. So uh, someone will post a couple days ago that in the UK and probably in most of the world, schools are closing. And so parents and students might need contact information and we'll be looking at open street maps. So it's good if the information is there and up to date for people to use. Uh, recommends then to pick an on a map, maybe pick your city or in your region, uh, identify the schools in the region, then and add up to date information on that so students and parents can get in contact with their schools, which is a good initiative. And I think it's fantastic that there's a crowdsourced map where people can share information and improve on information already there. Um, I, think, I think that's mostly have to talk in this uh, webinar. Uh, one of our project partners uh, some good information on how to follow up, up on street maps. So uh, I'll show this uh, presentation. I'll also put it on the Open AE website. I understand this is a busy time. Not everyone is available to join as flexibly as they'd like, and plans change very quickly. But I'll provide the recording. I think I record this uh, after the presentation. On this, so some information on who you. This is OpenStreetMaps, uh, the OpenStreetMap in public domain, uh, commons, open database licenses, and how to get involved. And there's simple activities to do. So one of the suggestions is add uh, hours in a common public space. So if you want to, to if your park has an opening hour and closing hour, you can add uh, to the map if you want. As I said in a previous example, you can also add information on when schools are open uh, or more things like health services. Uh, I'm happy to any questions if anyone has any questions. At the moment, I hope this has been clear and informative. Uh, it can be, can be a little. I have this photo here because this was one of my previous. A webinar that I added on top of OpenStreetMap. So there was a, a monument in Santa Line Square in Brussels uh, that wasn't on OpenStreetMaps. And I showed people how to add it, but I may not need it right now. So, uh, questions or anything that I'd like to share?
your way if you'd like. Thank you for this presentation. It was amazing, <laughs> very clear. Very good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not very complicated. As I say, you could just join maps um, through how to do this. But yes, once you, once you see how it works and how fast it can be done, it's quite good. Thanks, every year. You had interesting experiences during the earthquake. Ah, so uh, information on OpenStreetMap. Yes, of course, when things change, I think that can be good. And if anyone has any more to add, great. If any Well, if there's no questions, and I very much thank you for your time and uh, joining in this um, webinar activity, uh, online webinars for uh, all digital week. The next time, uh, everyone stays happy and healthy uh, for the next uh, for, for <laughs> Preferably, I know that this is a difficult uh, but staying it helps a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right away. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.